Arab Tov Chavrim. I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, friends, we do have breaking news. Uh, this actually came out about an hour ago. Uh, the Mike Pompeo, after the attack on Saudi Arabia's oil facilities, calls it an act of war. Says after Riyadh blames Tehran, uh, the, the weekend attack on the Saudi uh, Aramco oil facility was an act of war against Saudi Arabia, for which Iran was responsible. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced upon his arrival in uh, Jeddah for a working visit. Pompeo doubled down on U.S. accusations that the attack was carried out by Iran, even though Saturday's drone strike was claimed by the Houthi rebels in Yemen, where a Saudi-led coalition has been waging war since 2015. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that this is all happening at this time. And let me just real quick before I kind of elaborate on this, uh, mention here Liz Cheney calls for proportional military response against Iran. House Republican Conference uh, Chairwoman Liz Cheney uh, said on Wednesday the U.S. should consider a prop proportional military response against Iran uh, among her potential actions over its suspected involvement in the drone attacks on Saudi Arabia's oil supply. The position from Cheney comes as Republicans such as Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina are calling on President Trump to pursue additional action after uh, earlier Wednesday saying the U.S. would impose additional sanctions on Iran. Not acting uh, sends a message, frankly, that's likely to encourage an additional escalation by the Iranians. You know, it's kind of interesting. Just the other day, uh, President Putin was... Uh, uh, suggesting that the Saudis should have bought the S-300 system from Russia and they wouldn't have to be worrying about the tax on their facilities. Why he was saying that, of course, President Rouhani and also the foreign minister of Iran were all kind of giggling over there about it. Well, I wouldn't giggle quite so fast if I was Iran because regardless of who is responsible for the attack on that facility, Iran is ultimately going to bear the the uh, the, the cost of that attack, uh, whether they gave the weapons to the Houthi rebels or whether they did not even have any involvement whatsoever. And I say that because one of the latest things that I got over the weekend when we were at the conference was a phone call from John Moore explaining to me that his source inside of FEMA said that they were being dispatched with uh, ham radios that were inside Faraday cages. That's what they're being given to the FEMA uh, employees or the heads of the FEMA there to be able to stay in contact with one another. Now that kind of coincides with intel that I was receiving myself uh, directly from the Pentagon as well some months back that a possible major war against Iran could be on the brew in the very near future and it would also include tactical nuclear weapons. That is something that I was uh, that was shared with me, and uh, and of course, if that were to happen, the other concern was is that there could be a military response against the United States, uh, either by Russia or Iran, but especially that of Russia, and uh, and according to Israeli intelligence sources that I had months ago, back when this whole situation with Iran was escalating, it was shared with me then that this could also broil into uh, a retaliatory act and make even be a staged retaliatory attack by Russia uh, with limited nuclear strikes and possible or and or both an EMP3 attack on the United States, leaving the country in a very dismal uh, position, causing mayhem, unrest, and it would be used to disarm this nation after the Americans use their own weapons against one, one another uh, as people begin to loot stores and rioting in the streets would uh, ensue as a result. So, now it looks like that everything, the stage is being set. Maybe there are some truths to these things that are being said here uh, and about these attacks that are going on. We're going to have to watch this very carefully uh, to see where this is going to go to because I don't know for sure. We certainly hope that the situation will calm down on its own, uh, but it, I don't look for it to do so. But any, but anyway, if you would, if you're interested as well, some of the information we shared in this week's uh, this weekend's conference up in Pennsylvania with our friends up there. Uh, in fact, the hidden trail of the serpent is already airing on uh, Israeli News Live on our Patreon.com uh, forward slash Israeli News Live. We have aired that there uh, later this week. We've already got it prepared and ready to go. But later this week, uh, we will also uh, be responding. 
uh, on the situation. Uh, excuse me, we'll be also adding also part of Yana's Orlando conference on there as well. Uh, I'm actually getting uh, information right now as we speak here uh, on Iran. So uh, we will take a quick pause and add an additional information about the situation there in uh, the Middle East. All right, guys. Hey, I uh, wanted to uh, also include in our recording about the situation over in Iran. Going to come right back to the issue in Iran. A uh, good friend of ours there that always has some amazing intel about the situation on the ground, whether it be with Iran, the United States, Saudi Arabia, etc. Uh, once again, is sharing that information with us. I want to really thank them for doing so. Uh, also, if you guys remember, we had uh, we had shared with you from our uh, good friends there uh, about the ISIS leader that he was going to make a public statement, an audio statement in regards to Northern Africa, Libya, etc. Well, he did remind me that. Uh, of course, and, and we shared that with you guys in advance that this was going to happen. It did happen. The Guardian reported this uh, on the 16th there. Uh, that was two days ago. ISIS leader purportedly urges members to free detainees from camps. Abu, uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi appears to claim in an audio recording that ISIS is still carrying out attacks. An audio recording was released on Monday in which the leader of the Islamic State group purportedly called on members on the extremist group to do all they can to free ISIS detainees and women held in jails and camps. The alleged audio recording Abu, uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, which also said ISIS is carrying out attacks in different countries, is believed to be his first public statement since April when he appeared in a video for the first time in five years. So, uh, like I said, you know, we, we know we have very credible sources of information that we share with you guys. And, of course, that was what was shared. I want to share with you, though, and I took, uh, I just pasted it so you could see this a little bit better here from the email uh, that we had gotten about these issues. And specifically, I was wanting to get uh, his thoughts on this situation that is definitely spiraling up uh, or heating up over in the Middle East there. He states here, a few notes regarding the attack. The Saudi air defense did not see these drones and missiles at all. And that is the thing they tried to avoid talking about. That's a good point. Why didn't the Saudis recognize the drones coming in. How come they're tracking their uh, missile defense shield did not pick those drones coming in to shoot that down? By the way, they are American made, Patriot batteries, etc. The only reason they, uh, excuse me, there was no response until they started to hit their targets. That is why they needed the investigation. The only reason they say it was uh, Iran is because they found some of the squad of the drones and cruise missiles that did not reach their targets and fell in the desert. That means they did not even claim to have seen them and trying to shoot them down. They claim they did not expect any attack from uh, from north, but they claim the attack to the pipeline a month ago came from the north. So there was a precedence for an attack from the north, according to them, that is. Revolutionary Guard was not happy about the talks uh, of the meeting between Rouhani and Trump. They also know that Trump is worried about economy and cannot afford a very costly war. And $120 barrels of oil they also want America stopping Israel from attacking their bases in Syria and Iraq. I believe Trump has to review his campaign of maximum pressure or this one, this one issue is going to drag him to the point of no return and him being a one-term president. Okay, and of course, as he reminded me at the very end of the letter, by the way, remember I told you the ISIS leader is going to send an audio after a couple of years. Well... That exactly is exactly what happened, and of course we see the fulfillment of this. So, uh, again, thanks to our good friends there uh, that that have given us uh, shared with us information. A call also uh, John Moore that had shared with us the information about uh, FEMA and them getting their two-way, uh, excuse me, not two-way radios, but their ham radio systems delivered to their people in Faraday cages. It's not looking very great, guys. Anyway, don't forget, 
over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. We've put up the hidden trail of the serpent on there uh, by this weekend. I've already got it ready to go, but by this weekend, we'll also be including uh, Yana from or the Orlando Conference, some of the things that she shared there. And then next week, uh, sometime we will be including some of the things that she talked on in the uh, Pennsylvania Conference. Uh, we are getting things ramped up. And uh, it will be a very interesting uh, video, a DVD that we're going to be sharing with you guys. Uh, and of course, when you see the Trail of the Serpent, that's going to give you uh, the biggest part of that. But we're, it's going to be about twice the length there. We may just go ahead and put the whole series that we've done together in, in, a, uh, in a format for you guys so that you can share that with friends uh, and family that otherwise maybe not listen to the broadcast or share it with your church group as well. Uh, so we'll try to get that put together for you in the not-so-distant future uh, so that you have that in hand because the time is coming. What we say now is not going to be permitted. The rise of the serpent. You know, if you think about it, that's what I think I'm thinking about calling the one that I'm going to do on this hidden trail of the serpent is the rise of the serpent because Satan started this all off in the Garden of Eden. And it's coming to a showdown. And God will bring the judgment upon him in this final showdown. You know, we realize the scripture speaks about, Paul says there are many antichrists, but there's also a final one. And that final one will culminate Satan himself, that man of sin that will rise up on the scene. And by the way, when you look at the scriptures we share, and keep this in mind, if you listen to us over on Patreon, Keep this in mind when you get to the part where I talk about the Antichrist. I don't know if I clarified this enough in there. But the Antichrist is even in Revelation there when it talks about that beast in there. And he causes the, the people to make an image unto that beast that had the deadly wound. That's your Antichrist on the rise. He does the great miracles. Now you might say, Steve, how can you say that's the Antichrist? Well, you know, I don't sit there and tell you go read apocryphon but i can tell you one thing and i think it if i'm not mistaken it's the ascension of isaiah a fifth century document that describes in detail the very things we see in revelation but there he calls him that man of sin the antichrist himself so there's a lot of things when you begin to put pieces together that puzzle and part of what you won't see in here that we spoke about in the conference is also Qumran scrolls also speaking about Leviathan the judgment things like that that are coming anyway hope you uh, appreciate the broadcast we did here and if you would do remember us in your giving uh, we don't uh, sometimes we get sidetracked with these conferences there and we have not been able to put the information out there for you but the the amount of work that goes into preparing these things so that we can share this with you later is enormous and your help in making that possible is greatly appreciated right below the screens our address here if you want to do this by mail or israelinewslive.org you can contribute online and we thank you for that we are entering the, the people that donate and that help us here we're entering your addresses into a database. I've been also getting them by emails where people just email me this information. We're going to enter you guys into the database where we have a way to contact you in the future. It may seem to come anonymous to you, though. Just keep that in mind. It may come anonymous to you because there will come a time where you don't see the name Danoon Institute or Israeli News Live on an envelope. You just may get an envelope, but you'll know from the contents where you get it from. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.